much. Congratulations. You've been asked about it a lot, but it's official now. You moved to second on the all-time wins list. How much does it mean when you think about passing another great and Pat Summit? Um, mm. I wish she was still coaching. I wish she was still coaching. I wish she was still with us coaching. And I wish I had to work a lot harder to catch her. Um, and, you know, it's on, it's, it, it's ironic that it, that it plays out the way it played out. Um, Cause I didn't think, to be honest with you, I didn't think I would be coaching long enough to, to be in this position. That, that certainly wasn't my goal. It certainly wasn't what I set out to do. Uh, and there's been times when, you know, I, I have felt like it doesn't matter to me. And it still doesn't. It doesn't matter to me whether I do it or not, whether I, you know, get to a certain number or don't get to a certain number. Um, so having, having accomplished a certain milestone like this, it's more of a, you know, as I said earlier, it's it's an opportunity to reflect on almost four centuries, four four uh, decades of you know coming here every day and doing the same thing and trying to do it the best that you can do it, and the fact that it's been at one school probably is is more significant to me than the actual number. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's when that day comes and I'm not coming to work anymore, I'll be able to look back and say, yeah, here's what we did. And here's how we did it. I won't believe it, but here's how we, you know, here's what we did and here's how we did it. But all the players that I've had, all the coaches that I've had, you know, I said earlier, think about how many wins are sitting on my bench, sitting next to me as a coach and as players. Um, <laughs> I remember, I remember reading someplace one time, uh, somebody made a comment after one of our national championships, which I thought was pretty pretty comical <clears throat> but the comment was you know he only wins the national championship when he has the best players and i and i and i cracked up and i thought well i'd hate to try to win a national championship with bad players i don't know that i would have any success trying to do that but it make it makes a lot of sense that we won a lot of games because <clears throat> we we had a lot of really really good players and because we've had the best players, we've had an opportunity to win more games than most people. And that, you know, is what, you know, goes through my mind whenever I think about this as well. And all those players have you in common. And thanks for sharing that. Uh, as far as the game tonight, uh, you haven't been set on a starting five, but how did you like what you saw from Aubrey Griffin rising to the occasion. Um, we're, we're a slow starting team, huh? You can see uh, we're, we're a team that takes a little bit of time to get our momentum going. Um, and Aubrey's the same way, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but when Aubrey gets it going, as you saw, she gets into a nice flow and she just impacts the game in so many ways. Um, as I said, I, I don't know that there's anyone, you know, right now that you would say, well, that's your best starting five. I think, you know, we've tried to go a lot of different directions, but, uh, but I thought Aubrey had another great game tonight. You know, I thought she did a lot of really good things and looking forward to who we're playing Thursday night. We're going to need her to be that good. And then more than that. 
Another player who seems like she's gotten better and better every game is Avina Westbrook. And even despite the layoff, uh, would you say uh, she kind of picked back up where she left off? Yeah, he, he's gone through a lot of uh, adjustments, you know, um, not just her game, but her body. And um, I, I like that, you know, she's able to, to, to keep her, keep her aggressiveness and, and she's a, she's a vocal player when she's out there. So she makes, she makes things happen for, for us, um, you know, and if we can get really, really good games out of E, Kristen and Olivia, then we have a chance to be a really, really good team. And that's happened more times than not lately. Doug, you want to go ahead? Sure. Hey, Gino. Um, last game, you, you said Kristen and Olivia need to play better. What, what today did they do that you liked or, or maybe in some cases didn't like? Um, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy. When a coach says you have to play better, that means you have to do a lot of things better. Um, a lot of it starts with your effort has to be better. Your concentration has to be better. Your approach has to be better. Um, so all that goes into, you have to play better. So I never say, you know, well, she has to shoot better or she has to play better defense or anything. You know, when you say someone has to play better, that means you expect them to, you know, impact the game a lot. So what are they doing better? They're impacting the game. But, you know, like in Kristen's case, Kristen's had, the, Kristen's had probably her three best practices of her career, the last three practices. So, you know, it, it shows. It shows. Takes a while sometimes to get to that point, but hopefully we can – Keep building on that. Carl, you want to go ahead? You know, two-part question, if you don't mind. Um, first, how happy are you that these kids are actually back in school now and not on break, so they have something to do besides um, practice? And second part is, um, when you see a kid like Autumn Chassian do what she did tonight, her first points, how much satisfaction do you get knowing, you know, we know she's a great student, but it seems like a hard worker. Um, well, this is a weird year, um, uh, obviously. So when you say the kids are back in school, uh, that means they just moved from this part of the couch to that part of the couch and moved their computer. So now they're in class with this chair means they're watching TV and they're hanging out. The chair over here means they're in class. So a lot, for a lot of these kids, a lot hasn't changed, you know, uh, because there's not a ton of in-person classes that I wish there were, but there, there, there isn't. There's some. But at least there's work to be done, which is good, which is good. As far as Autumn is concerned, um, you know, uh, Autumn, I, I can honestly say, of all the kids that have come to Connecticut as a walk-on, I have, need, I have not, not had in 37 years anyone, people say, well, that's an exaggeration. I have never had anyone with the audacity to shoot as much as she does in practice every single day from the very first practice she was ever at. And, and I remember I had to say to her one time, remember when we were recruiting you and I told you that, you know, your role was going to be, oh, that's right, we didn't recruit you. So like, do you understand? And she's like, yeah, okay, fine. But when she's open, she shoots. She don't care who else is open. She don't care what the situation is. If I'm open, I'm gonna shoot it. So today she did what she does every day in practice. And I'm glad they went in because she makes a bunch of them in practice. So I'm happy for the kid and hopefully, uh, you know, 
she'll be able to tell somebody someday that like, yeah, I, you know, I played a game for Pavilion and knocked in a couple shots, you know, and it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling for her, great feeling for her teammates, for sure. But I'm afraid this is going to lead to like, you know, moments of like delusion where now she's going to demand playing time and X number of shots per game. Alexa, you want to go ahead? Hi, Gino. Uh, what did you think of Paige's performance tonight? She took a little while to get going, seemed to find her stroke better in the second half, but also just in general, where do you think she's at going into a big game on Thursday when you're really going to need her to, to step up and be consistent? Um, yeah, uh, you know, all these practices, it's, it's just been, it, it's been wearing on, uh, on all the players, on all the teams, you know, uh, somebody said recently, you know, I don't think playing four games in a week is beneficial for the players. It's not healthy. I say, you know, what's not healthy practicing five times a week and not playing a game. So, uh, you know, Paige has been a little run down, you know, she's been a little sore. Uh, so I, I think today just took a little bit of time to get going, but uh, for sure, you know, uh, Thursday and going forward, uh, you know, we're going to need, we're going to need Paige to be at her best. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not worried, you know, um, because she'll either be great, be mediocre, or be lousy. So I'm not worried about it. Whatever she is, she is. I, I think, I think she'll, she'll, she'll learn a lot Thursday and beyond that's going to help her, you know, either come March or down the road. But she has eight assists tonight. Yeah. Yeah, she had eight assists tonight. Um, and four steals. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, I got mad at her the other day because I said, all you want to do is, is be on offense. You don't want to play any defense. So I think she was punishing me today. <laughs> you know, you know how these women are. You know, you, God forbid you say the wrong thing. You get punished. Vicky, you want to go ahead? You know, um, what what was it about Avina when she was looking to transfer um, that that you that made you know that she was going to be a good fit for the program? And now that and now that you see her, like what a good role model she is for the younger kids. How much they look up to her. How happy are you to have her? Well, it, it's not something that I would, you know anyone on our staff was like, Hey, you know, uh, there's a kid at Tennessee. She's looking to change schools. Hey, we should, you know, look into that. It, you know, I, it didn't really play out that way. Uh, you know, so I, I didn't, it's not like I actually even saw Avina play a lot of games, uh, in her two years at Tennessee. So, Whenever you have someone that's transferring in, you you really don't know what it is that you're getting. You think you know what you're getting, but you're not quite sure. So then when he couldn't play that year, it took even longer to figure out, well, what are we getting exactly? Um, and, you know, when a kid ch ch changes schools, they've got to carve out their own role. They've got to find their own happy place on that team. And you can't come in when you change schools and say, I got this. All right, everybody, I'm in charge. You know, that's got to evolve, you know, organically. That's just got to come. And uh, and then you have to back it up. And uh, I think E, when he's really good, she's really, really good. She's really good. In a lot of ways, too. In a lot of ways. So I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her teammates. Charlotte, you want to go ahead? I think she set a record for most fouls in a minute and a half in Connecticut 
history, so she'll be in a record book. Hi, Gina. To follow up on Kristen, you mentioned her best practices of her career. What have you seen kind of on that thread of making an impact? What did you see in those practices that really made you say that? Uh, what did I see in those practices? Well, yeah. Um, you know, playing basketball means you have to do a bunch of things. You know, like you have to run back on defense. You have to guard your man. You have to help on defense. You got to rotate over. You got to block out. You got to run in transition. You know, you got to get on the offensive boards once in a while. You know, you got to get to the free throw line. So playing, being a really good basketball player means there's a lot of things that you have to be able to do really well. You don't have to be great at any of them, but you just have to be really, really good at a bunch of things. And for, for the longest time, Kristen wanted to be really good at scoring and really wasn't that concerned with anything else. But what happens when that's the way you are and the ball isn't going in the basket? Now you have nothing. So these last two or three days, Kristen's concerned more about, I want to be a better defender. I want to get more loose balls. I want to get more deflections. You know, I want to be a better, you know, uh, I want to be better in transition and running the floor, whatever the case may be. And, and the focus has not been, I, I got to make shots. I got to make shots. I got to make shots. That's usually when you start making shots. So, um, and if you ask her, she might give you a completely different answer, but I doubt it. Joe, you want to go ahead? Yes. Uh, Gino, you you mentioned your team starts a little slow. Do you think any of that has to do with the lack of energy in the building and even the energy and adrenaline you get leading up to a game has been tempered a little bit because half the time they don't know if they're going to play the game? Yeah, I see it. I see it on a lot of teams. That, you know, it's not unique to one, one particular team. Um, team or one particular school uh, environment and all the environments I should say all well, majority of the environments are like they are here there's nobody in the stands there's very little to get you ex you know very little from the ex external motivation force to get you amped up a little bit so you got to bring it yourself and to be honest with you it's just an extension of practice that's what it feels like and, and then when, you know, you go a little bit and you realize, hey, this is a game and, you know, it's another team and coach isn't blowing a whistle all the time to stop. We can keep going, you know. Um, so it does take a little bit of time. Um, plus, I think we're slow. I think we're slow. I think we take a long time to process things. We're slow. Pat, Rob. Gina, the last I heard there were going to be uh, 8,000 fans allowed at the Tennessee game. Is your, um, is your team, how do you prepare them now to, to actually have fans when they haven't all season? Um, I don't know how they're going to react. Uh, our freshmen have never played in front of fans. So I don't know. Uh, one of the... One of the uh, interesting things that I'm dealing with right now with this particular team, and I'm sure it's a function of being young and people being in new roles, is they don't hear a word I say. So that's what nobody in the building. So if we go there Thursday night and there's people and there's noise and there's stuff going on in the game. And uh, so I'm, I'm just as anxious as anyone else to see how that plays out with some of these kids because um, they've never been in that situation. Uh, now our older guys have. Yeah. But um, I'm glad there's going to be fans there. I, I think that's, that's a good thing. I think that's uh credit to, you know, and I understand too, talking to people that Tennessee's done an amazing job with all their safety protocols and everything. And that, uh, you know, the university's standards, are probably even above and beyond the state of Tennessee's and what, you know, what they're trying to do to make sure that there's a safe environment for all the teams, not, not just their team, but the visiting teams, anyone else. So I feel good about us going there. 
I feel good about all those people that are going to be able to come to the game, which also includes some of some of our parents and some of our friends of our kids that can leave tickets, uh, which will be the first time that they've been able to do that on the road. So it'll be um, it'll be a nice thing. Very nice. Doug Bonjour, you want to go again? Just want to ask you about the fans. Obviously, the first time in 15 years there, what kind of reception do you expect to get? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it would be bad. I don't know why it would be bad. I mean, um, you know, we're doing a good thing, you know. We're going down there and playing them. We're doing it for a good cause, you know. We're contributing a lot of money to a to a great charity, to a great cause. I don't know why they would be upset, you know. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they will be during the game if we play great. But um, I'm sure they'll be vocal and. It won't be like old times, though. It won't be. It won't be like that, you know. Um, and I'm glad. I'm glad because uh, a lot of times when we went down there, I thought, doesn't matter what they say, doesn't matter what they do. We have a really good team, and we're going to kick their butts. I, I, I don't feel that way <laughs> right now. <laughs> I don't feel that way right now. So. I hope they take it easy on me. Give me a break. Michelle Vogel. Yeah, uh, Coach, um, I was just wondering if you've thought about this, from this in this way. You and Tara and Pat were all born within about a year of each other. Um, mm -hmm. And you all were contemporaries, all going mm -hmm. against each other through the, you know, for national championships. and and it's the three of you on top, it seems to me like that's pretty improbable <laughs> in, in the sports world. Have you ever thought about it from that perspective that all three of you came along at the same time and all became iconic coaches at your programs and, and stayed as long as you did? Um, yeah. I, I mean, you probably couldn't find three more different people growing up in three more different environments, right? Uh, than the three of us. Um, so to converge at that place um, is pretty improbable. Um, it's, um, it's a function, I think, of uh, the longevity that it takes, the um, the number of the number of times you have to be willing to to get up in the morning and go do it again, the number of post seasons, or I'm sorry, yeah, post seasons, off seasons probably is a better word, where you might have thought, do I really want to do this again? And then you go and you do it again, you know, uh, the number of times where, you know, you you may have thought, can I still do it? Am I still effective? And yet. You know, here we are after all these years, um, you know, and it is highly improbable. But I think coaches last as long as uh, Pat, myself, Tara. I think they maybe last for a couple reasons. <clears throat> One, I was asked today, um, how much of this job, how much of my life does this job take? And, you know, they gave me like a number, 65, 70, 75% of your life is wrapped up in this job. And I say, you know, probably when you think about it, 90. Because there's never a time, especially now in the age of what we're dealing with communication wise, there's never a time when you're away from your job. This, this past March, April, May, that's the first time I've ever been away from my job. There's nothing you could do. You couldn't recruit. You couldn't coach. You could, nothing. You couldn't travel. So I got to see what it felt like to not be in that environment. And I realized how much of my life 
how much a Taro's like, how much a Pat's like. So you coach because this is your life. This is your life. And there's a fear sometimes of what am I going to do if I don't do this? Even though I'm, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to that day when I'm not doing this because I'm going to enjoy it. But some coaches don't deal very well with post-coaching careers that last a long time. So that plus success and, and having the kind of success that the three of us has had, I just think that it, it gives you a, a little bit of confidence that going forward, yeah, I can keep, I can keep doing this. I can keep making more players successful, making more teams successful, making more of an impact. So I, I doubt that the three of us would still be where, you know, numbers wise, be where we are. If somewhere along the line, we felt like we're not having the success we want to have, uh, I don't think it's worth it anymore. And I don't know if there will ever be coaches that are going to last this long ever again. I, I, I could be wrong again, but I think in today's world, things being a long time before you see three coaches that you just talked about in that same scenario, all be at that place. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen because as you see, you know, it's getting harder and harder. Can you coach, can you just, I know we asked you about this on Monday and you said you hadn't really thought about it in terms of extending the series. Kelly had a zoom, Kelly Harper had a zoom today and she said she hasn't really thought about next season schedule, but she would definitely, she said, I'm definitely open to that, that conversation and, and interested and sound like she really wants to continue it. Frankly, have, does that, what do you think about that? Or do you have any thoughts about that with, with her response to that? Well, another true fact, not everybody likes to play really good teams. <laughs> not everybody likes to do that. So the fact that Kelly wants to do that, I think is a, is a, is a great thing. And it says a lot about Kelly. Um, so, yeah, is it is it possible that we would play Tennessee either next year or the year after, whenever schedule wise it works for both of us? Yeah, it's 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 really possible. It takes two people that want to do it, and I'm always up for playing anybody, anywhere, anytime. People that know me know that, and if Kelly's up for it, I'm sure I'm sure it'll happen, and. You can be sure even more that it'll happen because of how few people really want to play in those games. So if Kelly wants to, I'm sure there's a pretty good chance it'll happen. When though? I don't know. Because of what's happened these last, you know, few whatevers, schedules got all jumbled up. Drop this, drop that, add this, add that. Once we sort all that out. I, yeah, I, I can see it happening, but I might have to go by my reception that I get. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are nice to me, I'll come back down and you can yell at me all you want, but be nice to me this time. 